all so obsessed with our sleep? Well, frankly, there's some pretty good reasons to be obsessed with our sleep. It really affects our daytime hours, how we slept the night before, not to mention all of the other health risks and benefits to getting a good night's sleep. Not sleeping can actually impact depression, obesity, type two diabetes, our cardiovascular health. So there's a lot of reasons why we need to get good sleep. Experts have totally jumped on the bandwagon and they are telling us all kinds of different things that we're supposed to be doing to get a good night's sleep. Enter the sleep tracker. We are a society of tracking everything. Some people track their steps, maybe a little obsessively. We track our subscribers, we track our followers, we track our PRs, and now we're tracking our sleep. Is this something that's really helping us or is this giving us even more anxiety? In today's video, I'm going to attempt a little experiment. I am going to do all of the things that the experts tell me that I'm supposed to do in order to have the perfect sleep. And then tomorrow, I'm going to do the things that I am not supposed to be doing. And I'm going to track it all on my Apple Watch. I'm going to put on the screen now my sleep from last night, which we're going to use as a baseline. And I didn't do anything that they told me. I just did me. And you'll see I scored a 67. So let's get this party started and I'm going to get going to get to my perfect sleep tonight. So in preparation for my perfect sleep, I've got to get a few things in order. Have to stay hydrated during the day. So check. One thing I don't normally do, and the experts say 10 hours of no caffeine. So I had my last cup of tea by one o'clock because I typically go to bed around 11. I worked out this morning. They recommend working out in the morning as well as a walk during the day. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a walk to the grocery store because there is a few grocery staples that are going to make me sleep like a baby tonight. I'll show you those when I get back. Back from the grocery haul with a few items that we have to have for our perfect sleep. First of all, kiwi fruit, long known for their antioxidants as well as their high levels of serotonin. So I'm definitely going to be having a kiwi later today. As well, I've got my herbal teas. Chamomile, long known, but passion flower tea is really, really up there as an anti-anxiety tea. And that's what I'm going to have a few hours or a couple of hours before my bedtime. I've got tart cherry juice, well known for increasing melatonin, relaxing you, also recommended by the Arthritis Society. Very, very high anti-inflammatory properties. So that's a must have. On to the nuts, almonds for sure, nature's tranquilizer, and walnuts. This is the trifecta in the sleep world. This one contains tryptophan, melatonin, and the omega-3 fatty acids. So for sure, we are gonna have a few walnuts. What you don't see here tonight are like my main meal food, two of them, fatty fish and turkey. We all know turkey, the tryptophan after Thanksgiving dinner. So I actually had some leftover turkey from Easter. I made a big turkey soup. That's what I'm gonna have for dinner. And I'm gonna incorporate a few of these things before I get ready for my snooze. And it's dinner time. Today, I've been following the 10 3 2, 1 rule to get a wonderful night's sleep. 10 being no more caffeine, 10 hours before sleep. Now I'm ready for dinner, three hours before bedtime. There is no more eating or drinking alcohol. Two hours before bedtime, we cut out any kind of work or decision making that could be possibly stressful. One hour before bedtime, we cut out all the screen time. So then we can really get down to just relaxing and getting some sleep. With my dinner, I've got my turkey soup, I've added my kiwi and my walnuts for my great sleep. And I've got my tart cherry juice. I've got one more thing to do before bed and I'll see you then. This is the prelude to an amazing sleep. 
I'm in a fragrant bubble bath now with an aromatherapy happening that is just bringing me to some kind of zen state. I've got my passion flower tea. I have beautiful scented candles. I can't read on my iPad because of the lights. So I've got Victoria giving me a book that I can just read like this. And I'm just about two hours away from sleeping time and I'm ready, I'm relaxed. And this is just wonderful. Just, I think we've checked all the boxes. All I have to do now is have the perfect sleep. Last thoughts now before I hit the sack. Your room, make sure that your room is comfortable. The lighting is dark, that you've got your blinds down. The temperature, not too hot. If you're cold, put some socks on, keep your feet warm. That's also a good idea. Make sure you're tired. If you're not tired, you know what? Read a few more pages from your book. As far as your body temperature, believe me, since I was menopausal, I cannot wear pajamas to bed. So. I'm going to lose these. Don't have a nap during the day. Make sure that you're tired at night. Forget the water. I used to have like a big glass of water before bed. No, I just have a sip of water, but really watching those drinks within the last two hours. So I'm hitting the sack. We're going to see how the morning goes, but I am ready now for my perfect sleep. Good morning. So I'm just back from Orange Theory and the question we've all been waiting for. How was my sleep last night? Well, let me tell you, it was pretty bloody fantastic, to be honest with you. The one thing, I'm gonna put my, my score on the screen, 93. And I'm just gonna say that I could have actually done better. And what was the problem? It was Will. Will slept over last night, he's doing a video, and he got up at 4 a.m. And I could hear him and he woke me up. And guess what happened when he woke me up? I had to go pee got up to go pee and then it took me a little bit to get back to sleep. Okay, this is back to the reason I said we're not supposed to be guzzling water or other drinks before bedtime. We do not want to develop nocturia, which is going pee two or more times a night. That can often lead to insomnia because when we get up, it means that we have to get back to sleep and that's where a bad cycle can develop. So really try to cut the liquids before bedtime. As far as hydration, of course we want to be hydrated. That's why I was drinking throughout the day. Now, what about tonight? Tonight I'm planning that I'm not going to have a great sleep. Now I'm not out to sabotage my sleep tonight. I'm not sleeping with the landing lights on in my bedroom and loud music playing, but we are going out tonight. I am going to be drinking wine. I'm not going to limit my caffeine to like noon or whatever. I'll do sort of, you know, probably three or four hours ahead. Um, and so more subtle differences, but we're gonna see how that plays out with my score tomorrow. Okay, so this is a no-no. Screen time and it's 10.20. We're in the Uber on the way home. I'm gonna like scroll through my comments and you know how I love to answer everybody. And then I'll be going to bed for probably not the perfect night. All right, so we're home. It's a little bit later than usual. It's about a quarter after 11, so I'm going to bed later than usual. I had a couple of glasses of wine, and I drank a lot of water because whenever I have wine, I drink a lot of water. So we've got a few things that are not in the check for the good night's sleep, and I'm gonna check in with you in the morning. And fingers crossed, at least Will's not here tonight to wake me up. So fingers crossed, it's not gonna be too, too bad. But let the sleep score tell us what happens in the morning. Well, good morning. Is everybody dying to know how my sleep was? After that evening last night of the wine and the late night and the screen time? Well, the truth is in the pudding. And I'm gonna put on the screen what my score is. And it was a really paltry eight, not too good. So I'm going to actually put my three scores on the screen and show you my baseline score, which was a 64. My perfect night where I did everything except count on the fact that Will would wake me up in the middle of the night, which was a 93. And last night's not so good sleep was an eight. All right. So, you know, this is really showing us the sleep scores, but is it telling us the whole picture? What is the deal with the sleep tracker? sleep trackers are really only 78% accurate 
in gauging how much time we're asleep. Their level of accuracy goes down to 38% in guessing how long it took us to go to sleep. In fact, when I used to have a Fitbit, it often thought I was asleep when I was just reading. It would say, oh, you just had a nap for an hour and a half. I'm thinking, what? So, you know, even though we know that the accuracy is not 100%, we still take it to heart. There have been research studies done now where people can be told fake news. They can be given wrong information. Oh, your score was bad last night. And then they report feeling fatigued, feeling not clear headed. They've been told that they have amazing sleep scores and suddenly they're full of life. So we can't put too much into what these scores are. There's now a sleeping disorder called orthosomnia, which is the unrealistic pursuit, the obsessive pursuit of sleep tracking scores that are high and optimal. And it's really gone kind of crazy. It started out as something very helpful, but sleep tracking has actually increased people's insomnia because of the anxiety about getting the sleep. There are so many health issues that revolve around sleep and that encourage us to get more sleep that that sometimes can cause us more anxiety and increase our chances of insomnia. Many women, including myself, started on that slippery slope of not getting the best sleep around pre-menopause when you start getting hot flashes or night sweats, etc. The moment that you're awake at night, it's harder to get back to sleep. We all know that sleep is vitally important, but it can become a vicious cycle if we become overwrought with the thought of getting enough sleep. Do try to relax. Implement some of the things that we talked about on the perfect sleep day if you think that it will help you. Now keep also in mind that not everybody is affected the same way. So the 10, 3, 2, 1, many people, including all three of my kids, are not affected by caffeine before bed. And in fact, for me, not until I became menopausal did I think that caffeine affected me. It was not, it was a non-issue. I really think that for me, the one thing that I'm going to stick with is limiting my water a couple of hours before bed because I'm getting up oftentimes because I'm chugging water before I go to bed and it only makes sense. So pick and choose a few things for you. Do your best to get a good night's sleep. Be tired when you go to bed. Rest easy, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.